I held the binoculars in my hands and looked at Elise, far away Elise, thinking about our next impending fight. What was I going to do that was going to make her angry this time? The smile I was wearing faded. What's wrong, little bear? It was her voice, Rachel's voice. There was the slightest whiff of night jasmine, and I looked up, over towards the chair Alan had been sitting in minutes before, the one that wasn't empty because somehow I could see her sitting there, with those beautiful eyes and her perfectly mussed up hair. Her smile somehow told me she knew I was hurting, and it pained her to see me that way. The words caught in my throat as I was trying to say them. Then my vision blurred, and I felt my cheeks turn flushed, wet and red. Oh, little bear, she said again, reaching forward with hands that could never touch me. I miss you, too. I gurgled some incoherent reply and turned away, digging for tissues in my backpack. I couldn't risk anyone seeing me break down like this. Elise would have a field day. It's okay, sweetie. You've had a long day. You're not ready to see me yet. It'll be okay. I'll come back later tonight, she said. She paused, then leaned closer to me. I need you to hear me tonight, sweetie. It's important. I'll be here, I was finally able to reply. I'll be stronger. I turned to look back after drying my eyes. The beautiful vision of Rachel turned into pure mist, and, like some forgotten memory, she was gone. Gone, but, oh, she was not forgotten. I clutched that braid of hair in my hand tight and swore I'd never forget her. Not ever again. That Night in the Park by Joseph McAvoy Available for purchase on Kindle and Amazon Direct